Are you wondering whether being a contrarian is the key to startup success? I'll teach you in today's video how and when to be a contrarian and achieve startup success. If you're not already a subscriber, then hit the subscribe button to get more great videos like this on how to be a successful startup CEO. I've used the exact strategies I'm going to teach you today to build several businesses to greater than $100 million per year in revenue. And I'm super excited to teach you these strategies. So let's get started. So what is a contrarian? Let's start with the dictionary definition of what a contrarian is, just so we have a place to start. The dictionary says, it's a person who opposes or rejects popular opinion. Jeff Bezos believes that contrarians are usually wrong. However, he also says in the same breath that when they're right, they win big. Now let's take the flip side of this. Peter Thiel believes that being a contrarian means that you think for yourself. That's his definition of being a contrarian. So now what do we do with these things as an entrepreneur, as a startup CEO? How can you think different and be successful as a startup CEO? That's what being a contrarian is all about. So let's talk about this and let's walk through a couple examples of this. In my experience in the startup game, to win big and to win almost in general, you have to be different. But being different alone isn't enough. My definition is you've got to be different in a meaningful way. That's how you win. Is how are you different and how are you different in a meaningful way to your customers, to the people that are going to buy your product so that you stand out. That's what I've seen in all the businesses that I've been involved with, with all the businesses that I've advised, is that all the winners have always done something unique and different. That's your mission. How can you do this and how are you going to win? If this content is resonating with you, then hit that like button, please. Thanks. Second, you can be a contrarian in an established category. I've done this. And let me give you some examples of companies that have done this as well that you'll recognize immediately. The first is Google. My God, they were not the first search engine. I don't know where they fit on the list. They probably weren't even the 10th search engine. So you can do that, but Google did it totally different than everybody else that came before them. That's why they won, is they did it in a unique and better way that resonated with their customers. That's why they ended up winning in search. So you can do it in an established category. I'll give you a second example of this. How about Tesla? Yes, Tesla. How about them? Elon Musk totally went after a business, went and attacked it in a totally different way than everybody else had previously. That's why they won. They had a different strategy that turned out to be better. So you can go after different businesses in very established categories. I've seen this as well in my own history, where some of the companies that I've been involved in we won by being very different and going after very established categories. Now there's some other keys that I'm going to get to in the third point coming next. Another example is Apple in the phone business. Think about the iPhone. There have been plenty of phones before Apple came around. They redefined the whole market by being the first smartphone that was truly smart and truly better than everything else. It resonated with the customers they wanted it to. And in simplistic terms, that's why they won. So you can do this in established categories. So now let's get to the third point. So what's your mission? It's how can you be unique in meaningful ways? Let me give you some ways to think about this. These are all contrarian strategies. The first is the blue ocean strategy. If you've ever heard about the blue ocean strategy, it's there's a blue ocean out there. There's nobody in the ocean and you're going to go after this area that nobody else is going to go after. The next strategy was invented by a fellow by the name of Wee Willie Keeler. I bet you've never heard of old Wee Willie. Now, Wee Willie was a professional baseball player and he was five, all of five foot four, 140 pounds. 
But his whole strategy essentially was why he won. And it's why, if you think about it from a marketing perspective and a business perspective, why you can win too. Here it is. Hit them where they ain't. That was his strategy. Now think about this from a product or business perspective. I think about hit them where they ain't. And I think about that as how can we be different and how can we, we, we be unique in a meaningful way? That's what old Wee Willie did. That's what you want to do too. Now there's more to this, which we're going to get to in just a second. Now, again, it's not enough to be unique. You want to think about, if you're thinking about markets, you got to look at the competition. Now, what are we looking for here? We're looking for weak competition, not strong competition and that is likely to react to what you're doing. We want weak competition. We want competition that is unlikely to react to what we're doing. That's what we want. Or a comp Now, how do we find these, comp these competitors that are unlikely to react? Well, you can look at past history. That's the simplest way to do this is, well, what was the last time they actually did something? Now, in a business I was involved in, which we ended up building up to about $200 million per year, and there were many established large competitors in this particular business, including names like Motorola. Motorola was in this business. Texas Instruments was in this business. Other companies like that, big name brands that most people in the tech world would have known about. And here was the thing. They hadn't innovated in this space in years. And because they hadn't innovated and we innovated in a radical way, we ended up dominating the space and it took them years, literally years to react. And by then it was all over. So we built a business to $200 million per year in revenue in the space by innovating and doing something different, all these types of strategies, being contrarian in our thought process was how we want. So what do you wanna look for? You wanna look for the weak competitors, the people that haven't reacted in a long period of time and are unlikely to react to what you're doing. Those are the things you wanna look for. Now, what's the end result that you're looking for here? Well, let's go back to um, uh, Peter Thiel's statement where he says competition is for losers. Well, we all have to compete. So I, I think he means that in a slightly different way, but you wanna limit competition as best you can. And what are we after here? Ideally, we're after a monopolistic position. That's what we want. Well, we end up as the dominant player by moving and moving into a space that nobody has, thinking different than everybody else and dominating the, the, the space by being different. That's what you can do if you execute a, a contrarian strategy well. That's our goal here. That's what we want. So get my free guide, the five rules you need to follow to have a successful startup by clicking the link in the comments column below this video or in the description of the video below the video as well. Either one of those will work. And you can get this, it's there for you. It's got nice tips and strategies for you to follow and all you have to do to get it for free is just click that link. If you haven't already, click on the subscribe button to this uh, in, in this video to get more great content like this for startup CEOs and just wait till the end of the video and there'll be even more great content that you can just click on, follow and watch even more great content related to this. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I'm Brett at brettjfox.com. Have a great day great day.